Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing and welcome to our ninth make of Christmas. So I'm gonna show you how you can take one of these and turn it into a quilt as you go Christmas stocking. It's cute, adorable, fun, and fast. So let's get started. The pattern for this, by the way, is completely free. You can get that over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. And we are giving you away these patterns for free. So if you appreciate these videos and you like them and you've gotten a lot of great ideas, a great way to say thanks for the free videos, the tutorials, and the patterns is to get things like the fabric from us. We have lots of cute holiday jelly rolls that you can choose from still. And this one is called Waku Waku Christmas, and it is by Cotton and Steel. So the first thing you wanna do is pull your jelly roll apart, and you kinda of wanna arrange it by colors because you want to be able to have nice color change as you are going through here. So I'm just kinda of pulling it, and anything that's, like I got my blues in one area, I've got some pinks here, some nice grays. These are definitely nice reds. These are gray, but they're a little bit lighter gray. So they might go with somewhere else, but we'll just put them with the grays for now. We'll add these guys to the pinks. All right, so we've got a nice mix. We've got some grays, some light blues, some darker blues, reds, pinks, and greens. So I'm just gonna kind of go through and select a strip as we go and kind of just have some fun with this and let them kind of fly. So it kind of looks like a little scrappy, but because we've used an entire line of fabric, it is going to look very coordinated in the end. So the very first thing I did was I layered my background fabric with my uh, batting on top. So it's this quilt as you go, so we're gonna quilt it as we are sewing it together. So that makes it really nice. You are never gonna see what's on this back. Uh, so I just used a plain muslin for that because you know, there's no point in getting something fancy. And especially if you're gonna use a white line and you wanna pick something that isn't going to show through that. So this is not necessarily the time to use the ugliest print that you've ever purchased and you don't know why, because you don't want it to show through. But some nice muslin is a really good way to use that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to kinda turn this down and kind of give myself a nice fold line here to give myself that first diagonal on where to lay my first piece. So I'm gonna unroll that, and it might be kinda hard to tell on camera, but I can see my nice fold here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my first strip, and I'm going to lay that even with that fold. And this is not a precise project. Like, it doesn't matter super, like a ton, if you are perfect with any of this. The idea is just to kinda get it done quickly, because, I don't know about you guys, but I've certainly made stockings on the night before Christmas, before because I had a newborn babe girl and I hadn't made her stockings because I was busy making everything else. So if you're in that boat, you can definitely get this done the night before Christmas. All right, so now I'm gonna take one of the pink fabrics and I don't, whenever I'm doing stuff like this, I don't really think too hard about what's coming next. I kind of just lay them out in color order so that I kind of have a game plan. And then from there, I just try to make sure that I'm not repeating any of the prints. So that way, this one with the penguins and snowmen and little cats is not the same print as this, just in a different colorway. That way we've got some good variety. So I'm gonna lay this one down right sides together with the strip I just laid down. And because this is the first strip and I haven't basted anything, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw some pins in here. I'm gonna be sewing along the bottom right side. So I'm putting my pins pretty far to the left side here. And I'm making sure I'm just going through all layers to kind of hold that together so that way I can maintain that 45 degree angle as best I can. You're gonna get off as you sew, it's, it's inevitable, but you can kind of start off this way and it's one of those projects again where it really doesn't matter if it's super perfect. So now using my walking foot, I'm gonna sew all the way down this side of the seam allowance and that will sew these two strips together and quilt it at the same time making it even faster for you. I've got my machiner's quilting gloves on. That makes it a little easier to kind of hold and push things through. I typically use this whenever I'm binding or quilting on my home sewing machine. Now 
Normally I tie off my threads and am really good about making sure I'm pulling my bobbin thread up to the top. That really doesn't matter with this project at all because we're gonna trim away our edges. So you can just, you know, cut your threads if your machine will do that or just snip them on your sewing machine. This is really a fast and easy project. It even doesn't matter if your quarter inch seam is perfect as long as you're catching all those edges because this is not exactly something that's gonna get washed and used the same way a regular quilt will. All right, so now we're gonna flip this guy open and using our iron, we're gonna put it down on the side that we're pressing away from. You don't wanna plop it down right on that seam because you can press in a pleat if you do that. You just want a nice flat seam that goes out as far as it can. Now you're gonna wait to do this until after you've pressed, but so that you don't end up with a bunch of things hanging off, you can kind of give this a little trim with your scissors. And sometimes these little bits are gonna be enough to fill in when we get to our corners. So make sure you do keep them because they might be useful later on. So I've got everything laid out nice and flat and I'm just kind of smoothing everything out. So that way I have a nice flat surface to work with and having just ironed it, that helps quite a bit. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my next print, which is my little green marching penguins and I'm gonna line that up. And again, I'm making sure that I'm going past my edge here because I don't want to not cover that whole area. And I'm just lining it up even with the edge of the one that I did right below it. Now at this point, I'm not gonna pin all of these because Basically, it got sewed into place, so that's not gonna move. So as long as you keep it flat as you're sewing and you keep these edges in line, you should be able to keep a relatively consistent 45 degree angle as you go through. I'm gonna keep on doing this until I filled the entire right side, and then we're gonna come back and do the left when we're all done with that. So I'm just gonna keep on going in color order, and this is an, an instance in which the bigger the sewing surface you have to work with, the better, because I'm just gonna be doing a lot of getting up and pressing and moving the sewing machine because I'm working at a smaller desk. So if you're able to do this at a dining room table and have your iron set up next to you, or you just have a large surface to work with, it's gonna be a little easier than me in my little, you know, nine by 12 sewing room that also is a functioning video studio. So keep on doing that and go all the way down and we will come back when it is time to do the top corner. So I've been sewing for about an hour and I've got my entire one side done. And so I just have my top left corner. And at this point, I have quite a few bit of scraps left and some of them are quite long from when I was working on the corner. So I can definitely reuse these as I'm working on the corner, especially since the top half and the bottom half are gonna be on two different sides of the stocking so it will be really easy to sort of repeat prints but one, one thing you want to keep in mind is if you're doing a pattern you now need to do it in reverse so my last one is gray so i'm going to start with gray on this side and then work my way to the light blue the dark blue and so on instead of going in this direction so that way i can maintain that pattern and it won't look funky and out of place um, but definitely you can go through this to get more out of it and get more bang for your buck. I actually have some prints that I still haven't even used yet. There's so many in this strip roll, so that's really fun. Um, and then of course you're gonna be sewing on the left side of the seam now instead of the, the right side. And I actually, I'm just gonna flip everything around so that way I can sew the way I normally would, but we're just gonna be working this way out now. All right, so I got my last corner done. In every case, except for the very first strip I added on to our first strip, I was able to use the extra fabric that I cut off when I was trimming the other corner. So it worked really well. I was able to reuse a lot of those fabric strips to make it scrappy and also look really cute. In some cases where there were only two of the prints from that particular colorway, um, there are repeats. So if you don't like that, you can just make this be the back of the stocking and that's no big deal. But at this point, like our quilt top is ready, the quilted part of our stocking. What I'm gonna do next is trim this up and that way we know exactly where our batting ends. So that way when we're trimming everything down for the stocking, we actually, you know, get all of the quilted part in there and not accidentally, you know, just have 
our little bits that are hanging off. So I'm gonna trim that up and then we're going to get this looking like a stocking. But honestly, this looks super cute just as is. I could see just squaring this up and uh, turning it into a nice table runner. That would be really cute too. If you didn't wanna take it all the way to the stocking step, you could definitely use the instructions to get this far, square it up, bind it, and call it a day. That would be also very cute. So, but we are gonna turn this into a stocking. So let's do that next. One other fun bonus by doubling up those strips to use this second corner and just sew it from what I had left over from cuttings from the first corner is I was able to have still 24 strips left over. And there's 40 strips in a jelly roll. So that means that you would be able to make two coordinating stockings from each jelly roll, which is a lot of great bang for your buck there. And especially if you're trying to make ones that are similar for siblings, that would be really cute and really fun. So my goal here really is just to even all this up. So working from the wrong side, so I can see where the edge of my backing fabric is, I'm just gonna trim off all these extra edges so that I have a rectangle-ish piece that I'm starting from. So you don't really need to worry about trimming this to a specific size or anything crazy like that. You just need to get it so that when you look at it from the front, it's a nice, even edge that we're working with. And we know that we have all three layers of our top, our batting and our backing fabric there for when we place our stocking template. So go ahead and do that around all the sides and then we're ready to cut out our stocking. Hey guys, so we had a little bit of a camera malfunction that I didn't realize until the very end of filming, but our overhead camera uh, did not work for the entire cutting of the quilt stocking and that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert some footage from when we did a stocking last year. So the fabric is going to change, but the techniques are all the same. So you're gonna see me, I'm gonna wear different clothes as I explain this and I'm going to be using different fabric, but uh, the techniques are all the same for that part of assembling the stocking. But I want you guys to be able to actually really see how to do this. So we're gonna have a brief interlude where we insert some footage from last year's Christmas stocking video, and then we'll come back to show you the finished version of this one. All right, we are in the home stretch of making this quilted Christmas stocking. I've got all my pieces quilted up, and what I've done is I have folded it in half, and I pinned along where all the seam joins are, so that way I know that it's gonna be nice and straight from the front to the back. I've also layered it on top of my binding fabric because we wanna conceal all the raw edges. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, lay my stocking template down. And again, you can get this template over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. We're gonna have it available for free for you. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay it down and I'm going to arrange it so that it's totally being covered um, I've got fabric along all sides. And then taking a marking tool, I'm just gonna trace around that to transfer that template. Now you're not gonna see these marks, they're gonna be sewn into the seam allowance, but I wouldn't use anything like a permanent marker. That would probably be really challenging to see. And it might bleed a little bit if you ever had to wash it for any reason. All right, so I've traced that down, and now I'm going to put some pins going through all layers. So that way I can cut through all layers at once without anything shifting around. You don't need a ton of pins, just enough to sort of keep it together as you're going. All right, now I can go ahead and cut this up. I do go ahead and use the rotary cutter on the straight edges, and then I will transfer over to scissors for the rest of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and unpin this and then we need to rearrange it a little bit so that way when we sew it together, all the right sides are facing the way they should be. All right, so I want to have this so that the right sides of my stocking are facing each other. And then I'm going to put it 
so that the right sides of the lining are also facing each other. If you don't want to mess with that, just use plain white fabric or solids and then you don't have to think about it. But as long as you have the right sides of the stocking and then the lining on top, the next part is going to be a breeze. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. What we're going to do is we're going to sew all the way around reinforcing our stitches at the top of the stocking and we're going to leave the edge open for turning. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start pinning these together so that everything is nice and even. Starting with the top corners. And then working my way down. I put my walking foot on the machine to help move everything through at the same rate. Now starting at the top, I'm gonna to start sewing around. I'm gonna take a little bit of a generous quarter inch seam, maybe three eighths of an inch would be good. Um, it's not exactly heirloom sewing, so your quarter inch seam doesn't matter so much. What matters is that you're consistent and you catch all the layers. When I get all the way to the end, I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce the stitches just so that it's nice and secure. If you're doing a bunch of these, you can do this step all at once and that way you're changing feet less often and it goes a lot faster. So now you wanna check on all your seams and make sure you caught all of the layers, which we did here. Then you're going to open it up and you're gonna put your hand through the piece part. So we have piecing on both sides here. I'm just gonna reach my hand through to the toe Give that a tug. This is why we reinforce those stitches on the sides. So that way when you're doing this, it's not gonna start coming apart on you. And then kind of smooth everything out. You wanna get it as smooth as you can at this point. Um, if you're having trouble, you can always put a couple of clips in those inner corners. But here we've got our nice little stocking. But I wanna push it out as much as I can now because it gets a little harder to do once you have the top on, although it is possible. So now we have our quilted Christmas stocking and we're all nice and lined up on the edges here. Our seams are coming together nicely. And then also on this side as well. If you wanted to, you could have like specifically pinned to make sure that happened. It's kind of a happy accident for me, but since they were already lined up when I cut it, the chances of them staying that way um, are the way they are. So now we need to make the cuff and a hanger and then we'll install it and our quilted Christmas stocking is all done. So I've cut a piece of white fabric that is nine inches by width of fabric. Now to determine how wide this needs to be, what you need to do is flatten out your stocking top, get it as flat as possible, and then you're going to measure it and this is six and a half inches. So we're gonna double that, which is 17. And then I'm gonna add a half inch for my seam allowance. So 13 and a half. So we've got six and a half doubles is 13. And then we're going to um, add that half inch. So 13 and a half inches is the piece I need here. So 13 and a half by nine, and that'll be enough for my seam allowance. Um, to get that cuff in. So, but your width is going to vary because depending on how deep of a seam you took, this measurement may be slightly different for you. While I'm trimming everything up, I also am going to cut my hanging piece. So I'm just going to cut a piece that is three inches wide by that nine inches. I'm gonna take this piece of fabric and I'm just going to fold it in half. Since it is kind of a long piece, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a pin at the top and at the bottom just to hold those corners nice and securely together. Now I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam down the raw edges to secure this. And I'm also going to press this piece to create the hanging sleeve so that I can sew all of it in one 
swoop. This bit, you're gonna fold it in half lengthwise, just like you would for a piece of binding. And then you're going to press that seam. Just press that to hold it together. Then we're gonna fold these in on itself. And if you want to, you can do one half at a time for that. Now, if you want to, you can switch back to a regular presser foot to do this. I'm just gonna line everything up so that is even with the metal part of my sewing machine and that will give me a quarter inch seam. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna press the seam open so that it is easier to fold in half and set inside of our stocking. Now I can take this and matching up my seams, I can flip this so that my raw edges are even. You really just want all of these raw edges to be nice and even with each other and your points to be fitted right nicely to each other here. All right, now I'm gonna stick this inside the lining of my stocking. I wanna open it up so that I've got lining on both sides of the stocking that's gonna hide any of those raw edges that are in there. So now I can slip this inside and I'm going to line up those edges with the seam of the stocking. So you can see here's my seam and then here's my stocking seam. And I usually do that on the outside edge as well. That way you have a nice solid piece of fabric going around. And what I like to do here is pin so that the pointy part of my pin is on the inside of that stocking. I find I stab myself less when I'm doing it that way. All right, so now I'm just gonna put my fingers in like this so that way I can pull this nice and taut. And the next pin I'm going to do is going to be at the opposite end in the seam. Like that. And then I'm gonna do two more pins about halfway around, just making sure that all of these raw edges are lined up with each other. One more side. So I'm gonna take my hanger, I'm gonna fold it in half, and I want it to stick out so that my folded edge is facing this way. So when I slip this in, I'm gonna make sure that the folded edge is going toward the toe of my stocking, and then I'm gonna fold it upside down, and I'm gonna stick it in between the cuff and the lining. So I've got my cuff right here, and I have my lining here, and I wanna stick it right there next to it on the back side. So it's just tucked right there. I'm gonna give that a pin. Hold that in place. So I'd like to start with the back of my stocking when I'm going around. And that is just so that way if there's anything that gets overlapped or bunched up a little bit, it's gonna be in the back where you're not really gonna see it as much when it's hanging on the mantle. So I'm gonna start, I'm taking a really generous quarter inch seam. I'm gonna reinforce those stitches. And I'm just kind of pulling things out of the way and stitching. And then you can sort of Move it a little bit, flatten this out as much as possible. And if you can push those pins in as much as possible so that they're out of the way and they're not gonna get caught on your machine. When you get back to the original area, go ahead and reinforce those stitches again. You can cut your threads. 
Now is the fun reveal point. We're going to unwrap that and pop the cuff over. Our hanging tab is going to come up as long as you put that in between the cuff and the lining. And now we have a really cute stocking that you can put lots of goodies in. So super cute. I'm gonna give this a press just because we've manipulated it a lot and it helps it look a little bit better when it's all said and done. So here we have it. We have our finished Christmas stocking. It looks really nice and crisp with that white top and then our nice mix of prints. Again, this is Waku Waku Christmas from Cotton and Steel. We have quite a few of the jelly rolls left at the time that I'm filming this. So if you like the way this turned out, you can make a couple at home. Again, you can get two stockings from one jelly roll. So you can get a lot of bang for your buck if you're trying to make coordinating sets for siblings or couples or whatever. You can absolutely do that. I think this would be great for a kid's stocking uh, just because, or real an adult too, this one's going to be mine. So I'm really excited how this turned out. Again, the pattern is completely free for this. You can get it over at shop.quiltanatomics.com. It is a quilt as you go jelly roll Christmas stocking. Long name tells you exactly what it is. So if you have enjoyed these videos and you've enjoyed the free patterns to go with them, a great way to say thanks is to get the supplies from us. We have this holiday jelly roll as well as a few others. We have some Christmas lines. So check it out. And the next time you need supplies for a project, we would love it if you purchased them from us. Thanks so much. And until tomorrow, happy quilting.